Hi my little shardies, welcome and welcome back. This is Christina with Shh Art Online. I hope you guys have had a fabulous week. All right, I will be featuring this product in today's video in my craft haul, which should post soon. But I wanted to go ahead and actually use the product a little bit so I could give a better idea on my haul video um, if I'm going to recommend this product or not. So, this is the product but I will be testing the product out in Johanna Basford's 2022 Weekly Coloring Planner. And I think I will be doing the image for February 7th through 13th. All right, let's check it out. It's packaged really well, so I'm gonna start with that. And I'm having a lot of trouble getting it out of the box, so I'm gonna pause, get it out of the box, and then we'll see what it is. And here it is, the SJ Starjoys Gold Edition, 120 pencils. This is a new product that just came out. Again, I'm gonna be using this product to color this image over here so we can test it out. All right, these are the SJ Starjoys Gold Edition, 120 set. For those who've been watching my channel for a while, I do have the SJ Starjoys Deli and the other SJ Starjoy 120 set. I actually have that set right here. Um, the deli pencils for a budget pencil are incredible. So I had actually got myself a couple of sets and wound up um, doing a giveaway and giving away my extra set of those pencils. The other 120 set, it, it was not bad, but it was not the delis. So I do know this gold edition set that Lori over at Color My World helped design these pencils. So I have very, very high hopes for this new edition of pencils. I think everyone needs a pretty decent set of pencils and the price of these pencils puts it into a category that is very, very budget friendly. So I think the set was around $34. I'll go ahead and put a link in my description box below for those who are interested in purchasing the set. I'm not gonna go into extreme detail about this set of pencils in this video. I am going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the pencils and we're gonna go ahead and do a color along and just try them out. I'm not even gonna swatch them out on video because I think actually applying them to a coloring page is gonna work best. So this tin is very similar to the other 120 set of pencils. Again, these are not the Deli pencils. These are the gold edition. Um, the other set has a very, very, very similar tin. So fortunately for me, I don't keep my other 120 set in the tin. I usually keep them in these these pencil cases that you can get off of Amazon and then I number the slots for where the pencils go that way when I pull them out I can just put them right back in their spot. I'll go ahead and leave a link with the pencil cases in the description box below as well. So let's go ahead and open these up and see what we have. So the first thing I want to say about these pencils is Lori had said on her video and, and guys after you're done watching this if you want to know more about these pencils she did help create them so she knows more than I could ever know about these pencils. Um, that said she said that some will have this woody smell when you open your case for the first time. I'm not sure woody smell would be what I would describe the smell as. I do know the previous Star Joys I had also had this this smell before you air out the pencils. It's a little harsh. It, it does have like a slightly, again woody is not the word I would explain kind of um, chemically you know, but again, they were packaged really well, so I guess some of that is to be expected. So the set has 120 pencils, and they are, uh, the packaging is incredible. They are packaged really, really well. It comes with this little booklet here, where you can swatch out the colors. And I do really love the fact that the paper for this booklet is not glossy. I cannot tell you how many times I open a package of new pencils and the paper they give you to swatch out the colors has like a glossy coating on them. 
so it makes it difficult to lay the color down. So I actually really, really appreciate the paper. Again, I'm not going to swatch these out today. Oh, this has a little blurb in there um, from Lori Green from Color My World. It says, this set is numbered in consecutive order. Each pencil was placed according to analogous trio on the color wheel. So basically that means when you're looking at this color thing here where it says 1R, 2R, 3R, they're talking about the base colors here being red. So these three colors will work really well together. So again with the OR that would be an orangey red so they would work really well together. So you're not going to get a bunch of muddy colors. Uh, the cores are 3.8 millimeter and are made up of quality pigments and an oil binder for smooth blending and layering. Barrels were created with the environment in mind and cut from eco-friendly softwood that is biodegradable and self-sustaining. Non-toxic shavings can be placed directly into composite piles and will break down quickly and safely. The barrel paint is a matte finish, which helps prevent glare, which is great for me because I'm shooting videos and I don't want a lot of glare from the light. Again, they have a consecutive number and color name, and it's got a bunch of different color palettes. And again, it is packaged beautifully. Guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am about these. I'm always looking for a great new pencil set. I usually steer all my videos toward Prisma colors because it seems like everybody has those but I do realize that they can be quite expensive and not affordable for everyone who's out there coloring. So I've been looking for a nice budget-friendly set. Again, I love the delis. I don't color with them nearly enough, so I'm hoping that I really fall in love with these. So let's check them out. What do they look like? And they are absolutely beautiful. I love opening a brand new tin of pencils. So as you can see, they're all in order. So you got your 1R, 2R, 3R. Um, something I like right off about them, other than they're absolutely gorgeous. The writing is really big. I love that. And I love how the numbers and the name are on the back of the pencil here. I cannot stress this enough. When I sharpen my pencils, because I use them so often, I often sharpen over the name and number of the pencil I'm using and that creates a problem if I'm trying to reorder them. And I don't know which ones I am out of. So I do love the fact that they're on the name and everything is on the back of the pencil and it's written big enough that I can see it. I'm not young anymore. I'm getting kind of old. So that's really nice there. So that is layer one. So you have your pinks, your reds, your orange, your yellow, green, blue. Got some more blues. Um, I know this area here is your jewel tones. So again, if you want to know in detail about this set, go ahead and watch Lori's video over at Color My World about these pencils. I think she's got a whole series on them. These right here are just your regular standard jewel tones. So your mid-tone pencils, if you want like a true red or a true yellow or a true, or true orange. This is where you're going to get those. All right, another thing I'm noticing is these tins here to pull the colors out. I cannot tell you how many times I pulled color pencils out and got a super flabby tin. This is actually not too bad. It does, it is a little flabby, but, but for the price of the pencils, I mean, come on. I've seen way, way more expensive pencils. Right, and in this final layer here, you have some color correcting pencils. Again, she'll tell you about those on her video. We have some skin tones and some pastels. I love how they're set up in like little groups. 
so you can figure out like so I don't have to go searching for my skin tone pencils they're right here I think that's incredibly she was very thoughtful about the way she put this set together I have to give her some credit there all right I have talked your ear off enough about the pencils as they are let's go ahead and give them a try one more thing really quick I just wanted to show you the previous 120 set this is what the pencil looked like so as you can tell again the barrel is super glossy it's really hard to read the name and the number and of course when you start sharpening this the name and number are going to go first the gold edition much easier to read the number is super clear the name is super clear and you're going to be very unlikely to sharpen that off if you get down to that point you should be buying a new pencil and the barrel is thicker on the Stardroy Golds you can see the difference between the two pencils there and the core is covered which helps protect the core of the pencil without further ado let's get this thing started all right I'm going to be working out of Johanna Basford's 2022 weekly coloring planner and I'm going to do this image right here for February 7th through 13th so I'm kind of knocking two birds out with one stone I'm going to try these new pencils and I'm going to get my weekly coloring done I've only actually done a few pages in this book so far so need to get another one completed I'm not going to do this super realistic I want to try the pencils I don't want to spend a huge amount of time today doing that so I'm probably not going to go super super realistic like I have no idea what type of flowers these are so I'm just gonna color with whatever I feel like coloring with all right I'm gonna to try to use these pencils as they were intended to be used or the way they were set up so I'm going to use 25 YG which is glory green 26 YG which is spring leaf and 27 YG which is apple green let's see how these colors so I'm gonna start with 27 yellow green apple and I'm just gonna lay a base color down on these long stems I understand I'm not talking very much I'm trying to get a feel for the pencil they kind of um I'm trying to think of how to explain them they're so smooth they're almost like slippery across the paper I mean that's again one color and my initial first thought I mean I'm barely touching the paper and the pigment is going right down so that's definitely a a good thing I don't know what to do I don't know I'm trying to think of a set of pencils I have that feel this way when you're laying them down and I don't know what to compare them to and it could be just you know I sharpened it for the first time this is the first time I'm using it so I don't know if that kind of slippery feeling would go away they just glide across the paper all right I'm going to come in now with my 26 yellow green spring leaf and there's not a whole lot of detail in these stems so I can't so I'm not going to make them super super detailed they do lay really well right over the other color I'm going to come in with my 25 YG which is Lori Green I 
Again, I'm not, I didn't swatch, I'm just going right into these images. Just kind of grabbing what pencils I think may look good, but based on the barrel color, which the barrel is actually pretty close to the color I'm getting on paper. Said this one is a little more olivey, but I've I'm layering, so it could be that because I'm layering. And I'm going to come back in now uh, with my 27YG, which is the apple green. And I'm just kind of going to blend using that color, going right over the other colors, just trying to see what would happen. Again, I color differently. I'm not a professional in any way shape or form I'm just self-taught and I like to color so so my thoughts are basically based on just how I like to color I mean, the pigments are really, really nice. I like that. I like that they're pigmented. I come back in with the Laura Green 25 YG. They do create a really smooth blend. To the point that it's kind of hard to see like the difference in colors which is is definitely a good thing they're blending almost too well let me see if i can zoom in a little more on this i mean i wouldn't even need to pull out a coloring blender for this And the way they're gliding across the paper, too, may not have anything to do with the pencil at all. It may have to do with the pencil on this particular paper. Coming in with 26. Okay, so I'm going to come back in on this one. I'm going to introduce a new color. I think I'm going to try the 65 Jewel Tone Hemlock just to see if I can get a little bit more contrast. I know it's not quite going with the three color theory going on there. Again, it's like the colors blend so well together that I'm not getting, you know, the full contrast that I want. And guys, I didn't swatch these out in advance or anything like that, so the colors that go together definitely go together. They blend really well. I just like a little bit more contrast, so I'm just adding some of the other colors into it to get that contrast. And now I'll come back in with the 25. I think anytime you're working with a new set, it just takes you a little while to kind of figure out what colors suit your coloring style. So I think that's um, a lot better to have it pop a little bit. So if you just use the three colors the medium, the light, medium, and dark, I got that, but I had to throw an extra dark in there, or I chose to throw an extra dark in there to help it pop just a little bit more. Again, I think it's all for the effect that you're trying to do on how you want to use these pencils. I do absolutely love the fact that the blending is very effortless. 
I would even say in some regard maybe a little bit better than Prisma colors in that. I mean for a budget pencil this is definitely really nice. A lot of budget pencils you cannot uh, you cannot blend with. I'm gonna come in with my latest 27. All right, I'm coming back in with my hemlock. So I noticed I didn't do this over here. Gonna come back in with my 27. Come in with my 26. Twenty-five, and then I'm going to do the sixty-five jewel. And the twenty-five, and the twenty-seven. I think this section in the middle here, I'm just going to use this 27. And I'm leaving this one the way it is right now just so you can see the difference. So when I added in that fourth color, I got the pop there. And this is the three color. Again, it goes it goes really 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 well together which is definitely a good thing in most regards but for me I like a little more contrast so adding something just a little bit darker in I definitely like that and I think just for you know keeping time on the videos I'm gonna do my normal where I speed up in between the colors and I'm gonna try to give you my thoughts on the pencil set at the end um, I can tell you first impression wise there's a lot of things I absolutely love about these pencils and then some things I'm kind of on the fence about but whenever you get a new pencil there's a learning curve so it does not matter if you're doing a five dollar pencil or a hundred fifty dollar pencil you're gonna have a learning curve if you especially if you're used to using a particular brand all the time for me I use a lot of Prismacolor um, I love the blending capability on that pencil so very very familiar with that pencil I know the color sets I know the combinations I like to use so when you get a new set it's kind of a learning curve you have to learn that stuff um, with each set of pencils that you have so um, I love the way the pencil feels in my hand so that's definitely a plus there um, I love the fact that it's got the matte barrel you wouldn't think that's a big deal but I shoot videos so the fact that you can easily see the writing in the video, I absolutely love that. I would love this to be my primary set because it's just so easy to show you guys what I'm using. Um, I love the fact that the writing is on the end of the pencil, that the number's on the end of the pencil. I really like that. The pigment is really nice. I like that the colors blend so effortlessly when you put it down. But again, that's kind of a double-edged sword because it's so effortless that I feel like I have to add additional colors to it. The one thing I'm not really sure that I love about the pencil, please don't come for me guys, just trying to give you my honest opinion, is the fact that it glides so well across the paper that it almost slides. Like I feel like I have to maybe hold it a little tighter than I would or I'm going to lose control of it. Um, it's just very slick across the paper. The, there's almost no grip to the tooth of the, the paper. 
like if I had my eyes closed and I was coloring with this pencil, I would think that it's not laying down any pigment at all because the way it slides. However, it does lay a lot of pigment. The pigments are really nice coming out of the pencil, but I'm just trying to give you an idea on how it feels going across the paper. I mean, again, you're, you're talking about a budget pencil, and this is for a budget pencil. It is a really, really nice pencil, so I'm not saying don't get it or anything like that. I think, again, it's got a lot of amazing qualities to it, but first impression-wise, and again, I've used a whopping four pencils out of the set. That's what I'm feeling, again, and I don't, I don't really know how to explain the glide across the paper. It just doesn't feel like it grabs any tooth at all but it is and it's laying the pigment down it's just really really slippery and if anyone else has these pencils and and can describe that a little better than i can please put a comment in the comment box below let others know your first thoughts on the pencil again other than the sliding of the pencil i'm really enjoying this set so far all right, I'm just gonna leave these pencils off to the side for now and I'm gonna start working on a different part of the picture. Just get a few more colors in here. I'm gonna do these flowers right here. And I think that I'm gonna go ahead and do them pink. All right, I think I'm going to use 67, Sophia pink, 68, Destiny pink, and 69 Himalayan pink. And I'm going to start with 67. I'm going to go right in the inside here. I'm barely touching the paper and the pigment is just laying down. I think that's where you see that it's not like although it's a budget price that, you know, it's a, a good quality pencil. And now I'm going to come in with 68. And I'm going to come in with 69. All right, y'all, same thing. The gradient on this is incredible. Again, I'm gonna come in with 67 and I'm just gonna come and do the same thing over again, putting another layer down. The pigment is just amazing coming out of the pencil, but I'm kind of running into the same Thing that I was running into before and again I'm learning this pencil as I'm doing this video so what I'm telling you is only like 20 minutes of using it so I'm not even sure that's like kind of fair but trying to give you my honest review and it blends so well that it's almost too good. I don't know how else to say that. Like it blends so well and the colors go together so well that you kind of lose a little bit of contrast because it's so smooth. And that's probably the point of that, by the way, that the colors blend so well. I mean, you almost don't even have to try which again is the entire point of the picture. You don't have to, like that would take me several, several layers, like three, four, five layers with Prismacolors to get that level of blending there. And I'd probably still have to use a blender pencil if I wanted to speed up the process. All right, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of 54 pink fuchsia and see if I can just have it pop just a little bit more. And now I'm gonna come back in with my 67.
I'm probably going to be the first colorist and <clears throat> and all the people that that uh, use these pencils that it sounds like I'm complaining that they blend so well together. I'm definitely not complaining. I'm not used to it. it it's so different from other pencils. It's so unique in that way. Uh, by the way, I'm using 27. It's so unique in that way that it's almost unbelievable on how quickly it blends together. I'm adding some 26. And I'm going to skip right to the Hemlock 65. And then I'm going to come in with my 25. And then I'm going to come back in with my 27. Kind of blend it all together. I mean, again, it does such a, a gorgeous job, like, I know if she were to see this video, she's probably saying that I'm coloring or using the colors the wrong way, but I don't think so. They're absolutely gorgeous. I totally love the blendability. That is something that I look for in my pencils, like is the number one problem with me because I can't use solvents and stuff because of the way they smell. So in the center of this one I'm just going to use the 57J uh, Sunshine Dawn. I'm just going to throw that in the middle for now. and some Sienna Brown 96. All right, I'm gonna keep coloring in the flowers like this. Just this type of flower right here. I'll leave the other ones alone for now and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, I got a little crazy during that little break off and I did a little more than I was supposed to do, so I left this flower here open to show you what I did with this and I used the same color combinations in this over here. So let me explain to you what I did here. Um, I left some of the green flowers up here open so I can show you what I did there. So in the center part of this, I, I believe it's a pansy, I used uh, Dawn Sunshine 57J. And I put my first layer down. And then I came in with 96S, which is Sienna Brown. And I kind of went around the outsides. Then I'm going to put a second layer on again with the 57. And with the 96. And the third layer. not showing as much brown as this one over here so I will throw a little bit more of that. Now I'm going to come in with my purples and I've been using um, 48V Wisteria, 47V Plum, and 46, 46V Violet. And I'm going to start with my Wisteria, which is 48. I'm going to throw that in there. And 
And then I'm doing my 46V viol violet. And then I'm coming in with, sorry, I just grabbed the wrong pencil. A 47V Plum. Coming back in with my 46 Violet. And I'm going to come back in with my 47 Plum. And now the Wisteria 48. I'm going to come in with my plum again. I really like how you can build up the layers with these pencils. A lot of times with a budget-friendly, inexpensive pencil, um, they won't accept more layers after the first layer or two. With these, I'm having no issue. In some regards, I have to work the pencil a little more than I would say an expensive pencil like, or a more expensive pencil like a Prismacolor. However, the blending on these for an ex inexpensive pencil is, is really, really good. I would say that's its top feature. So if you're struggling with blending at all and maybe the Prismacolors are not in your budget, I truly believe that a set like this would be really, really good for you. They do blend really, really nicely, so got to give credit where they're due. I'm very impressed with the price of these pencils and the blending availability, because, or the, the blending ability of them. That is very rare in a, in a budget pencil. So now I'm going to come in with um, some black 118, and really lightly just going to go over my shadow area there. I'm not doing anything super dramatic. I'm not being heavy handed. I was a little bit over here. I'm lightening it up over here a little bit. And I think I'm going to come back into the center one more time with the 96 uh, Sienna Brown and just darken that up a little bit. This is a little washed out compared to what I actually see. The purple is a little bit more purple on mine off camera, but it's not too bad. That's not the pencil's fault. That's my camera's fault. All right, so I was also taking um, one of the purples and putting it up here. I believe that it was the 46 Violet. Let me find out. It was. And there's no way for me to get a lot of detail with a colored pencil in this area. So one color over here is going to have to be enough.
I mean, these little flowers, that's how small they are. So the other way you could do these, if you didn't want to just do all of them exactly the same color, um, you could do, depending on where you put your lighting, you could do like darker purple over here and lighter purple over here. And that would help a little bit if you run into an issue where you want to highlight that area. But I'm not worried about that in this image. I feel like that's kind of a little bit of the background there. So it doesn't need to be like perfectly pulled forward. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. Now I came down here and I did this over here and I started doing this one and realized that I went too far because I hadn't shown you guys what to do or what I was doing. So for my base color on that, I used uh, Lemon 24 GY and I just did an all over coat on this here for the base Now there's a couple colors in here, a couple, couple color combinations that I maybe wouldn't use in the way that she has them set up in this box. And this is one of them. I like, I like these two together and I like these two together. I don't like the three of them together. I feel like this is maybe a little too minty to go with these two colors. Not to say that you can't, but it just kind of, when you put all three of them together, they don't, I don't like the way they look together. I think there are, are better combinations. So with this over here, I took the middle color out. So I was working with um, the chartreuse, the lemon chartreuse 24 and the grasshopper 22. And then I went in to each of the petals and I pulled the green up. Again, there's not a whole lot of room to do a bunch of different colors here. The petals are quite small. And if your green isn't dark enough, you can always go back in and add some, or you can use the 25 Lori green or stick to the 22, it's up to you. The 25 Lori green is gonna be a bit darker. So you can definitely put that in there instead or add it with. See how that's starting to come forward, not blend into the background so much. And again, I want to stress this. If I'm saying something about the colored pencils that you don't agree with, that is completely okay. Everyone has their different opinions and different coloring styles. So just because I wouldn't use a color combination like that doesn't mean you shouldn't. It doesn't mean that there's not a purpose for it. Again, I'm not a professional in the sense of I did not have I did not go to art school so I'm just self-taught and I'm using colors that appeal to me all right so now I'm going to use just a little bit of black which is 118 and just at the very very tip of it I'm going to throw just a little bit to give it this effect that I have over here. Does it really need it? No, you could have done without the black, but I'm adding the black. All right, for the grass, I'm gonna use the same colors that I did in the, the petal over there. 22 grasshopper 
24 lemon chartreuse, 23 Easter grass. And I might have messed up when I talked about my color combinations before because this is, again, it was the 22. These two are really good together. These two are really contrasty. I love it. The three together. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to do the 22 grasshopper. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that down. It's a real olivey color green. And then I'm going to come in with my 24. And I'm going to blend right into that. And I'm just going to show you over here the 23, if I put that Easter green in there, so I mean, it's a little minty. It's not bad, it's just feels maybe a little cooler than the, um, the real olivey, yellowy color in the lemon and grasshopper. All right, I'm gonna come back in for a second coat. So I'm gonna do the 22 grasshopper. Darken that up. Come back in again with my 24 lemon chartreuse. I'm going to bring that right into the grasshopper. Come over here and I'm going to go, just going to add a little bit over top of that middle shade there. And then I came in like with my earlier colors, the 65J Hemlock. And I'm going to put a little bit of that at the base to kind of just give it a tad more contrast. So it looks a lot like that. And you can see over here too. No, you can't. I'm just going to look really quick and see if there's anything I've missed as far as the grass goes and I missed over here. So I'm just going to take some 22 grasshopper. And some of the hemlock. And there's not a whole lot of, of space to be able to, the lines are very, very, very small. All right. So now I'm going to do the mushroom stems. I did these, I threw some of the gold color in there and I actually don't like that there. That's not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to come back in and choose another color for the bases over here. I'm going to use Yellow Peach 95S. And then you can come in if you want really lightly, do not press down hard, 96S Sienna Brown. And I'm just going to do like a little tiny shadow. And I know that this camera is kind of washing out the color a little bit. I'm sorry about that. All right, and I think I'm going to stick with this color combination a little bit here. And I'm going to use the 98S, which is beige, and the 97S, which is brown light. And I think I'm going to use that for my mushrooms. 
so I'm using the 98S first. And now I'm going to come up with the 97. Sorry, I have a cat that's using a scratching pad right now. Right now I'm going to go in again with my 98 beige. The blending on these, I, I can't, it's impressive. Especially if you use the color combinations in the order in which they're in the, the box. I mean, if you're looking for a set that you can blend by hand effortlessly, or pretty effortlessly anyway, 97S by the way, um, where you won't have to use like a blender pencil or solvents, these are a really nice pencil for that. And I'm kind of heavy handed when I color too, so I'm, I'm very surprised. I mean, again, um, most colors, if you work with them enough on the more professional range of pencils, um, you won't have to use stuff to blend. It's just for me, on video, it would take me a while to blend by hand to get a nice smooth blend without the use of 98 uh, without the use of a blending pencil that said not with these I don't need a blending pencil all right and now I'm gonna come in with the 96 s just a little bit I'm gonna add just a little bit more Right. So I have to do something with these back here. I need to bring up the purple or bring the purple down here. I think I'm going to use that for purple. And I'm going to just use Wisteria 48, which is my latest shade of purple. Kind of like sort of in the background, so I don't want to bring them forward too much. Plum 47. I think I'm just going to do real basic. Just those two colors and be done with it. All right. I did this here on the... Okay. I did the base the same way I did the leaves. And then I did the leaves up here the same way I did... The leaves here so I forgot to tell you that and if you haven't done that yet that's how I did that all right so we have the option of either going around and doing the outside or kind of filling in this middle area a little bit with the background um, and I think to speed things along a little bit I want to do the background so I'm gonna do just a basic blue I think I'm going to use the 8 MP, I'm sorry, I thought hold the pencils the right way. I'm going to use 78 MP. Which is bringing time. I'm going to use 79 MP which is early morning sky. And I'm going to use 80 MP cerulean. This is one of the things I absolutely love about this set as a YouTuber um, is that the color is that it's so easy to read and see the colors, the color number, and the pencils aren't too shiny. 
I love that about these pencils. All right, so I'm going to start with my 80 Cerulean. And I'm probably going to speed up this process because there is a lot to color on here. All right, so I have the ADMP Cerulean, and I put that about to this point here. Um, the reason why is because now I'm going to go in with my early Morning Sky 79, and I'm actually going to backtrack it down, down around here so that it blends in with that previous color. And when I add my darkest color, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave like a space that they overlap. You don't want to just bring your new color directly to the line of your original co color. You want it to overlap. That's what's going to give it like a pretty gradient, not just like a color change. So I'm just overlapping to my lighter color. And yes, I'm coloring right over top of these purple flowers. Again, remember I told you they're the background, so it's not really doing anything. There's already a coating on there. It's only changed the color a little tiny bit. I'm not worried about that. It's actually softening that purple just a little bit. And I'm barely putting any color down on the paper right now. I'm barely pressing that paper. Especially where the gradient is, the color changes. Anytime you're doing like ombre or like a gradient, you want to make sure that you take your time with it. And build the colors up. I don't do a whole lot of gradients, not because I don't love them, I absolutely do, but because on camera um, I don't have the time usually to do that. It's just easier for me to grab some neo colors or distress inks or something like that for the background. But this time I'm going to take the time and I'm going to do the gradient because these pencils seem to blend so well. I'm just going back and I'm adding a little bit more color. All right, so I'm actually going to go back in with my Cerulean Blue 80. So that's the original color. And I'm going to go back over I'm not going to focus too much on the bottom part right now, just where that gradient is. And I'm adding another layer. See, I pressed a little hard here. Going back in with my 79 Early Morning Sky. Again, I'm really focusing on that area where the two colors are overlapping. Coming back in with the Cerulean 80. Bring that down. 
down just a little bit more. Yes, I'll probably darken this up. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. Again, right now I'm just trying to focus on that gradient area. I'm going to come back in again with my 79 early morning sky. And each time I'm pressing a little bit harder. I haven't focused up here yet because my darkest color is going to go up there. Um, so you'll see where I passed the area here with the morning sky earlier. Again, I'm only focusing on that, uh, the line, the transition line between the two colors right now. And I'm coming in with my 80 Cerulean. I mean, I do not know, you see the transition between the colors there? You don't want like a harsh line. That's why I'm working really hard on that area. If you can help not getting a harsh line when you're doing a gradient, then you're doing a really good job. Can't tell you, even to this day after coloring for the last few years, sometimes I still get like a really harsh line because I didn't take my time with the process. Just have to be not very heavily handed when you're doing it. I am just blown away by the color blend. I know it took me a little bit to do it. But again, usually with a budget pencil, that is not something that is obtainable. Usually you have streaky lines. It doesn't blend well. But these are like blending beautifully together. And I would argue, and I don't know about other colorists out there, but I would argue that doing a smooth gradient is <laughs> probably the hardest thing to master with colored pencils. And I have used a lot of pencils. And getting this effect without a blender pencil or with an inexpensive pencil is pretty impossible usually. Could I have used a heavier hand and done less layers? Probably, but this is a new pencil to me, so I took my time with it. And now I'm just going behind and, and uh, trying to cover up some of the tooth of the paper because I've been very light-handed in doing this. But it just goes to show you that you don't need to buy a super expensive set of pencils to get similar effects as you would with something like Prismacolor. I mean, amazing. 
I'm going back in with my 79 early morning sky. And one of the other things about these pencils, and I think I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again, is the amount of layers this is letting me lay down. Again, that's not something that's super common in a budget pencil. Which is another reason why getting a gradient like this usually wouldn't happen with a budget pencil. At least in my case. Again, I'm usually pretty heavy-handed. The more I'm working with these pencils, the more I'm liking them. Again, they're a little bit more time consuming in some respects than my Prismacolors, but a lot of that too is learning color combinations and stuff. I've been using my Prismacolors for so long that it's like second nature to me as to which colors that I use with what other colors. All right, I think I'm done with the blending area here, but I don't, I mean, I really, really, really think that speaks for itself. All right, so I'm going to work down now, which is not usually the way you do this, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to take my 78 Brigantine. And I think I'm going to color Again, I'm not being heavy handed. I could be. To speed up the time on this video, but I'm not going to. I'll just speed up the process of me doing it on the video. Off note of the pencils, one of the things that is frustrating about this book is all the images are on the left hand side, which means when you're coloring over on this side of this particular book, you have the spiral bound and that's what your hand is laying on. And for somebody like me who is right handed, it's kind of a pain without turning the book. And you guys don't seem to like when I turn the book, so I'm trying to do this without doing that. All right. So I'm lightly coming down with this color. And now I'm going to go back in with my Early Morning Sky 79. And I'm just going to, again, I'm putting a little more pressure. Going right up into that darker area. I'm not burnishing the paper at this point. I'm just adding another la layer with a little bit more pressure. Come back 
coming back in with my darker color, the 78 Brigantine. Again, a little more heavy handed. And again with the early morning sky, 79. And again with the bring in time, 78. Right at this transition line too, I'm going to come back in with my 80 one last time and just really make sure that line is seamless. And right now, because there's still a little bit of white in the paper there, I'm just doing circular. Circular strokes at the transition. Again, if I had to choose one, one selling point for these pencils, and only one, and I couldn't choose any other selling point, I would say the blending of these pencils for a budget pencil is far superior to any other pencil that I have personally used, especially as they're supposed to be a little more oily based than say the Prismacolors, which are wax based because I struggle a lot personally with um, blending oil based pencils like Faber-Castell. Not that I can't do it, but I struggle with it. And again, I cannot use solvents or anything like that. I have breathing issues, so that's not something that would work for me. So I just want to show you the transition areas. I mean, for a budget pencil, I'm just shocked. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the rest of this off camera as far as the background and I'll be back in a minute. So go ahead and pause the video, do your background and I'll see you in a minute. But there's the general idea and you're just going to follow this over here. It's going to take me a few minutes to do that. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. But I'm definitely impressed by the level of... By the transition areas. Like I'm just super, super surprised. Now I will tell you there's a layer of wax on this paper now. 
but you're going to get that no matter what you use because I put a lot of a lot of layers on there. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, y'all, I finished the background. Um, I finished the background here. There, I am so completely surprised about the availability, about their ability to blend so seamlessly. You can definitely tell there's a gradient, especially from the dark to the mid-tone, but honestly, for a budget pencil, I mean, phenomenal. I also did have to sharpen my pencils uh, two or three times during that process, but again, if it was Prismacolor, I would have had to do probably ten times to get that gradient with the amount of layers that I put on there. So, wow. All right, so now I'm going to work on this outer edge here. I'm going to try to stick to some of the colors I've already used. Switch things up a little bit. So I'm going to go with Dawn 57, Sunshine Dawn. And I'm going to use that for my bottom layer. And again, I'm not going to go around the whole picture right now. I'm only going to do this one side right here and then I'll do the rest off camera because this video is getting really long. So I'm going to come in now with the uh, 97 Sienna Brown Light. My cats are getting into something. So if you hear some stuff in the background, that's what's going on. And then I'm going to come in with some Sienna Brown 96. And I'm just going to do that around the outside of the image on what I would think would be the trellis area. And I'll be back in a minute. Alright everyone, I have worked on this image enough, I think. This is going to be the completed image with the SJ Star Joys. So I went through and I added all my trellis work here. I took the pink from the flowers and I put it in here. But there was a couple things I did. I added a little bit of violet around the center of these flowers to bring in the violet in this flower here. And then I introduced a little bit of 102 Good Earth. And I added that a little bit more to the mushrooms to help make them pop. And then right along the edges of what would be the like golden look of the trellis, I added a little bit of that brown there again to help bring it forward and help it pop. Put a little bit of that brown here. You know, again, just to bring it forward and, and add some, some depth to it. And then I took some of this Midnight, which is number 77, and I darkened up my corners a little bit, gave it a little bit of vignetting, and then I added a little bit down here too, just to give a little bit of further contrast in that down there. Again, I'm still trying to figure out how to color Joanna Basford in my style. That said, the colored pencils have nothing to do with that. Um, so 
So my final thoughts on these colored pencils are I would highly recommend them for somebody who is definitely a beginner, maybe doesn't have a good set of pencils yet, um, is looking for a budget set of pencils that will blend really well. I think the key to this set is how well they blend. I think that is the number one thing that I would say about this. They're highly pigmented, which is another awesome trait, and they layer well. So that's three like huge things that you usually don't find in a budget set of pencils. There's also a wide array of colors with 120 colors. So again, a great set. $30 is an incredible price point for the quality you're getting in these pencils. The blending for me is a double-edged sword. Um, if I use it in the color ranges in which she's saying where she put the three colors together and they work together, so it's a, a light, a medium, and a dark, they blend almost so well that you lose contrast. That's my opinion and the way I color you know, somebody else may not have that issue, so I had to add four and five colors instead of just the three. You could do it with the three, but for me, I was losing a lot of depth that way. And that would be my only big negative about these pencils. Some things that I like um, beyond that is they sharpen really well. Um, when I sharpen my Prisma colors in my pencil sharpener, there are a lot of times where I'll get like unevenness as I sharpened down the core. I didn't get any of that with these pencils, so they retain that. I thought that was incredible. I love the fact that the numbers and color name are on the back of the pencils, so you don't have to worry about as you're sharpening the pencil, losing the information of which color you're using or you're low on. Um, I love the bold print and how easy it is to pick up on camera, and the fact that the pencils aren't super shiny, so as who's doing coloring on camera, um, I really find that appealing. So not bad at all in terms of a budget-friendly pencil. If I had these initially and I was just coloring coloring books or something like that, um, I don't know if I would find a need to step up to something like Prismacolor because I think these blend so easily and they layer really well and they're pigmented. So they have all those things that Prismacolor has. Just Prismacolor may be um, a little bit better a step up, but $30 versus, say, $130, $150, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. These are incredible in that regard. So for the budget pencil line, this would probably be one of my favorites. Um, the Deli pencils are really good, too, by SJ Starjoy, um, but the ease of blending on these is just, is just amazing. For me, I just have to find the um, the color palettes that I like together with the pencils. Again, it's a great start with the three colors that she has. I just like things like a little more contrasty, um, but as far as blending, it's absolutely effortless. The colors work really well together. Um, I was so impressed when I did my gradient background. It just, it really, really smoothed out well. I mean, I have four colors in this background here, and it just is seamless. So I'm going to have a link in the description box below for these SJ Starjoys. It's the 120 Gold Edition. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you're told each and every time I post a new video. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, color happy, and remember... Shh, it's our little secret.